You know, I first came to Western in July of 1994. I had just graduated graduate school at Eastern Illinois University, um, and I was hired to be a hall director in Hininger Hall uh, in the North Quad um, by Gary Johnson and Andrew Schinkline and Kathy Cavins. Um, and I, I had sort of known them through my undergrad and grad years a little bit, um, but they, they didn't have any positions left at Eastern, so the uh, next best thing was to change my first name and come up here, and it's uh, probably one of the best decisions I've, I've ever made. Um, shortly, after, shortly after that first year, they changed Bay Hinn into a complex instead of two halls, and I took that over f from 94 to 1999. Um, probably the best job I ever had. I hate saying that because I, I like the one I'm in, but some of the best years of my life were from 1994 to 99, and Bayless Hinn are the the staffs that we had there and the camaraderie and, and everything. Um, and I, I'm particularly reminded of that this week. This would have been the start of a homecoming week for 2020. And, and um, homecoming was a really big deal for us in the North Quad and Bay Hen and Wetzel uh, back in the mid-90s and late-90s. And um, those, those staff and those students still remain loyal to Western today, still remain very connected to Western today. Uh, in fact, I, I just got done setting up a virtual happy hour for a group of those people for next this upcoming Friday. Um, so those were really, really formative years for me uh, at the beginning of my career at Western. I, uh, it's also in 96, in the summers, uh, I had the great pleasure and distinction, I, I guess I would say, of being named the coordinator of St. Louis Rams training camp. And they did their training camp here for nine years. And... Um, Man, was that a fun job. What a, what a great experience, um, great for the university, great for the community in terms of all the people and personalities that came through Macomb and WIU. Um, it's really terrific. And, and uh, it, it ended up being so good for me that, that I was asked to, to work both Super Bowl 34 and Super Bowl 36 when uh, the greatest show on turf went to uh, Atlanta and New Orleans and, and, and played, uh, played the Titans and, and the Patriots. Um, just unbelievable experience. I got to work operations for the Rams during that, and uh, I, I could probably do a I could probably do a whole segment on just time at Rams camp. But so I got to do that while I was still early on in my career here. Um, at some point, I quickly uh, um, moved up to, to Seal Hall as the assistant director of residential facilities, and I did that for several years until I was promoted to the director of residential facilities, working with all the the facilities on campus and um, Gary Johnson also asked me pretty quickly after I moved to SEAL to be the liaison for facilities for athletics. Um, at that point in time um, I had a pretty good relationship with athletics and I had a pretty good relationship with facilities. Uh, probably a better one than they had with each other so Gary thought I would be a good arbiter for them and I ended up doing that for a dozen years. and. Uh, I've been very involved with athletics uh, from, from the get-go. I love, I love sports and always have and, and certainly support our Leatherneck uh, athletes, student athletes and coaches here and, and always have. So um, in 2006, I was named the Assistant Vice President for Student Services, which at that time um, supervised uh, housing and dining services and the Student Development Office, uh, Tracy Scott and the Student Development Office in orientation. And I did that for, I would say, three or four years. And um, Al Harris retired, and I um, took over his responsibilities uh, from the University Union, the bookstore, student activities, and um, uh, campus rec and the golf course. And th those all started reporting to me along with SDO. So. Since about that time, I, that's basically the job I hold today in, in some way. Uh, they, they change it up from time to time depending on needs and consolidation and budgets and things like that. But uh, um, it, it's, it's also a really great job. I don't want to undersell the, the complex director thing, but when you live and work with some the, the people that you work with, uh, it's hard to form bonds like that. So I, uh, I'm, I talked about athletics and how much I love athletics. One of the things I got to do early on was be part of um, Leatherneck Club. And I was on the Leatherneck Club advisory board before they went in a different direction with that. Uh, but one of the things I've always continued uh, is being on the Purple and Gold Auctions Committee and Gala. And 
Uh, I've been on that for almost 20 years now and probably for the last dozen co-chaired it with Jerry Kramer, uh, Hall of Famer Jerry Kramer. And um, I'm really proud of the work we've done with that, uh, with that night and with, with that event to help uh, WIU Athletics um, um, and, and support those student athletes that go out there and represent us uh, in the uniforms, on the courts, in the pools, on the golf course, uh, all those places. And so um, that's been one of the fun things that I've got to do um, while I've been here. We've done two of them now. We've done Wetzel and we've done Higgins in terms of demolishing buildings uh, on campus. And I don't think anybody feels good about doing that. Um, I will say this, we have some colleagues around the country that says there's nobody, there's nobody that can demolish a building and have a party like Westerno. We tailgated for both of those and, and we made those as good a celebrations as we could to honor the tens of thousands of people that went through those complexes, Higgins and, and Wetzel. Um, thankfully, it wasn't my building. For Bay Hen, I would have probably been a much bigger mess. I mean, Drew Kaya, who was sort of my, uh, he, he was sort of my arch rival in the North Quad. He was a Wetzel and there were, there were dozens and dozens of those staff members that came back and, and I know it was very emotional for them and that sort of made it emotional for us too um, because it, it was all those homecoming rivalries and intramural rivalries and, and all that stuff. And um, again, you don't want to take down the buildings, but the, the, the truth was those buildings were made to be up about 30 years and they had, they had done that and then some and they had outlasted their natural life. And when we did it, we tried to honor them as best we can. And I think we did that and I'm proud of that. The, the relationships I built during Rams camp uh, have been uh, lifelong um, and, and, and probably life-changing, not just lifelong, they've been life-changing for me. Um, getting to work for an organization like that, um, it, it, up close and personal, there, it, really nothing like it. And I became, I became close very early on with John Oswald, who was the Vice President of Operations, and that, that was probably my in. And, John's as hard a worker as you'll ever meet, and he's as good a NFL operations guy as there is in the business. And um, he trusted me on a few things early on. There were some hiccups that, that I was able to take care of very early on, and that really changed our relationship to relationship of trust very quickly. And that, that certainly benefited me, and I think it benefited the whole operation and, and, and Macomb. Um, and John's the one that invited me down to work those uh those super bowls you know getting to getting to be on the the plane with the rams my name was on the i had a seat on the plane and uh i i, I was able to re, uh ride in the victory parade in the back of a uh one of the f1 ram 50 trucks uh i, I was on the cheerleader one so i really lucked out and uh going down market street and and watching dick Vermeil get the key to the city so um, Bob Wallace was the vice president, senior operations person for them and legal counsel. Uh, Bob, and I, been, Bob and I remain friends today. Uh, in fact, I, I will tell you, um, they, they both still live and work in St. Louis. And John, most recently um, in retirement, decided to come out of retirement and work uh, game day operations for the St. Louis Battlehawks and the XFL. So I was able to go down and do that this spring before the COVID shut it down. That was fun to get the band back together for that. So, uh, you know, not only is the relationship for me, there was a lot of student workers of kids that worked the desks there and the security that had those relationships and this changed their lives too. And so um, what a great deal for everybody involved. My grandfather was very civically oriented on my mother's side, particularly, and he was involved in things uh, in the community. And, and I grew up in south, southeastern Illinois in Crawford County, a little town called Palestine, Illinois, and um, right on the Indiana-Illinois border, pretty down close to Kentucky. And uh, Grandpa was always doing stuff, and I, I think that that's uh, informed how I do things as, as I've gotten older. Um, when I first got here and the Rams weren't here, I coached baseball in the summers for out at Patton Park and Everly Park at different age groups. Um, I did it with Jude Kaya. Uh, he was a good baseball coach. I, I was not so much, but I, I was there to support him. Um, I also was for five years the pack master for Cub Scout Pack 300, and and uh, I was probably a better fundraiser for them than I was a pack master. Uh, so 
Um, but that was a great experience working with Tom Moore and, and Tom Moore and, and you know Dean Roberts, who's an RA to me, works really close with scouts. Those guys put in tons of hours supporting the scouts. Uh, you know, later on, uh, later in life, I've I've done Big Brothers, Big Sisters, um, uh, and having a little brother. And if you haven't had the opportunity to do that, and you have the ability and the time to do that, uh, I would encourage people to consider doing that. There's a lot of need out there, and it's it's. Uh, it's very fulfilling. Um, I've I currently sit on the board for the the McDonough County or the Macomb Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'm not only the Western liaison, I'm a full board member on it, and it's, it's great to work with people downtown to to make Macomb a better place. Um, uh, I'm also and have been for a while on the McDonough County Humane Society. Um, you know this because you know me that. Uh, uh, dogs are very near and dear to my heart. They're, they're, they, I find them often to be better than people, especially these days. Um, and uh, I, I try to do my part for it. I will tell you, Bonnie Scripps and the people that are on that, that board are doing God's work. They're doing amazing stuff um, on little resources. I know we're really excited right now that we're, we're getting ready to go out for capital campaign for a new shelter and that will be a game changer for the county for for the the pets in this in this county uh they deserve that we're the kind of community that deserves it and i think we're going to get it done so if anybody's listening to this and you you want to write a check we'd love for you to do that uh and the other thing that i'm currently involved with um in terms of the community um is uh i'm on the spoon river board of trustees and that's been a that's been a, a a great experience for me to meet different people uh, around the area and the region to to try to make higher ed as good as it can be for for everybody here western and, and spoon river dane and i first got a sheltered dog when when our dog max we thought he needed a playmate and and max will turn 14 in two weeks so i hope to go over and see him but uh, we got maddie from the shelter and she was she was actually the last uh she was the last dog at the end of the shelter and it was on a day that we were supposed to have a active shooter training. Um, it would have been in 2007. And something happened on campus that day where we couldn't have it with the board of trustees. And um, we went out to see Maddie and we said, you know what, we're gonna get her. And so I called out to, to um, say, we're gonna take her. And they, they hung up and I called back and said, hey, not for nothing. I just called out there to get this dog. And said, we had to go to the back of the shelter to tell them to stop them from putting her down. She was about to be put down. And so I, there's been a few times in my life that I thought were the greatest days ever. And that was certainly one of them is knowing that, that Dana and I uh, saved, saved Maddie's life. And we just lost her last year. Uh, and then the second shelter dog I ever got was a dog named Charlie. He was 10 years old. I lost him within a week of Maddie last year. Um, and I think Charlie's probably one of those Hall of Fame dogs that, uh, that you'll never get another like him. But the one you're talking about is, um, it, it, is Bonnie Scripps called and there was a German Shepherd out there that had cancer in the back of its legs, myopathia, and um, it couldn't move around very much. And uh, Lucy was the dog's name. and. I decided to give her a hospice weekend. I brought her, brought her home, fed her, took her for rides. She got McDonald's, Casey's Donuts, everything a, a dog should deserve on this last weekend. And, and uh, it's heart wrenching because that dog from the, the chest up, it had everything about it. It still had its dignity. When it, when it needed to go outside, it would try to pull itself towards outside and I would carry her out. And I slept on the floor with her those two nights. And before we, they, they actually came to my house and put her down, it was on a sunny July morning. And, uh, really nice day and they come and put her down there and I probably haven't cried that hard since I was a little kid and um, she she got buried properly instead of what she would have got if she died on that concrete so I got the honorary alumni award in 2014 I believe um, and uh, very much to my surprise um, you know I I've had some neat recognitions over the year, but I think that if I, if you, if you truly and made me pick one thing in terms of recognition, I'm proud about. That's the most proud. Uh, I'm a very proud Eastern Illinois alum. People don't see that because I think it's bad form to 
to work for one school and then promote another a lot. But uh, I love Eastern Illinois University. I'm very proud to be from there. Um, so to have people feel like that I deserve to be honorary alum for Western, that has a really special spot in my heart. I, I've worked hard to be part of this campus community and, toward the, to, and the university and, and the community as a whole. And, and the recognition of that certainly That'll, that'll even touch an old grizzled guy like me. I eat out about every night. That's not really hyperbole. I eat, about, I eat out about every meal. And so shelter in place was a real game changer for me, not in a good way. I'm a social person and, and uh, I'm like, wow, that's, that is going to be a blip on my radar. I've got to figure that out. And I, there, there's several of us that eat out in town. Jackie and Dave Thompson, who are great alumni for, for Western Illinois University, uh, they eat out quite often too, and we, we always are probably in the same places, and some others. And Jackie and Charlene Callison were talking one night. It was a Saturday night, and I was following them on a Facebook feed, and they're like, yeah, I didn't know that they were having that special at Old Dairy today, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to create a page that, where all the restaurants locally – can have one place to go to we can maybe get the menus on it we can get their daily specials and so i i privately reached out to as many restaurant owners as i could and said if you will post on this thing i will drive traffic to it and um i thought at the time maybe we get three to five hundred people to get on and, and you know people it just i did it in my garage off my phone i was mowing the yard burning limbs and i come in and, and it literally created that thing on my phone thinking okay this will, this will help a little bit help me anyway and uh it, and it just took off and it took off really fast and uh i probably got as lucky as i've ever got and i thought what if we did a bingo card and put all these restaurants on them and played you know blackout bingo or bingo and and we incentivize it and i'll do the first hundred bucks of incentive myself and I, I, Kirsten Todd, who's our marketing person, um, on her own accord, not on Western's time, on her own accord, um, put that bingo card together out of the goodness of her heart. And it's a terrific bingo card with all the, and it's not just Macomb folks, there's Table, or there's uh, Blandonsville and Colchester and, and Bushel and other, the, the surrounding county. And man, did that take off. And then I got somebody that privately said, I'll match your hundred anonymously. And I put that up that we got matched, and I ended up with 80 prizes. And I didn't, I didn't reach out and solicit one prize for that bingo, not one. This community came together hard for that, and it was, it was great to hear some of the stories. I, when I was handing out the prizes, it was during COVID, so they'd have to come to my backyard to get them, and they'd say, you know what? We'd have our grandkids over, and they, we'd say, where are we picking on the bingo card tonight? So I feel like, you know, I feel like that our restaurants are sort of our community. Uh, dining table it's where we come together and i think it's wildly important for us to save them i hope it helped them a little bit I, I i like to think it helped them a little bit um i mean we have to ask them to to totally know it's and i'm sure it's been a roughest years they've ever had I, I i know some of them certainly benefited from it the the full scoop was probably over in colchester if you haven't eaten that that's the world famous home of raspberry lemon ice cream apparently and uh it's it was amazing to me to see pictures. People would post pictures of the full scoop with lines out to the highway. Um, and I had some people that did know about it said, JB, we're mad at you for putting that on the map because now we've got to wait 40 minutes to get our ice cream. You know, and Palermo's, as you talk about Palermo's, uh, they were on the bingo card. And they've always been out here on the, the west side of town. And because of the card, a lot of people went out there and were like, oh, my goodness, you know, that Stromboli is so good and it's, and it's cheap and it's, it, you know, and, and so I loved hearing the stories about people that tried new places for the first time or didn't know that the places served what they served. Um, I, 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 those, those stories fill my heart, seriously. I mean, I, I want it most for the restaurants and for those workers that were out there in the front line and the cooks and the servers and the delivery folks. I mean, uh, and it's also changed how they do business. There, you know, you see some places that have gone to where they have electronic ordering now. People put in extra phone lines for delivery. Um, they, they, they understand how to do curbside. I think, I think it's changed the way people do it. And, and it's free. You know, social media is free. That, it didn't cost them anything to be on that page. So, And, you know, for it to grow to almost 5,000 members is, is insane. 
yeah. Uh, you, you're asking about the McDonough County Quality of Life uh, Award that they give me for a commitment to volunteerism. Is uh, all, all I'll say about that is uh, I certainly didn't do it for that. It was awful nice of those people that nominated me and, and those people that, that thought I was worthy of, of one of those awards. And, and by the way, there were more people that got those awards than me. There's there half a dozen, I think, that they gave out. And so there's, there's much better people on that list than me. I, it, it was it, it was very nice of them to do that. I'm very humbled by that. I came here because of people I knew, and I've stayed here because of of the people. Um, I think no matter where you live, you have your ups and downs as a community. I think we have way more ups and downs, and and I like our chances to 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 bridge the gaps that we have to bridge because of the people that we have here. Um, I like that it's the kind of community that sometime I'll wake up in a snowstorm and somebody said they've shoveled my driveway um, or they've paved my drive and it's that kind of place. Uh, I, I like the downtown square. The, the I like a place like Nelson's. There's three generations of, of people that have worked there. You know, while Amazon's kicking everybody else's ass, John Nelson's still there uh, doing something his grandfather started his son's taken over. and. I'm for that. I like our local restaurants. I like the mom and pop restaurants. I think they matter. Uh, I like the colleagues like you and Phil and the people in Seal Hall and Western Hall and Sherman Hall that I, I get to work with. Um, there's a lot of retired people that, that that put us on their shoulders that still live in this community, the Gary Johnsons and the Al Harris's and the, the folks like that and student services. I mean, I, I, I hate naming them because you leave out so many good ones. So. Um, Earl Bracey's, all those fo folks that, that come before us, you know. So I, I stay here because of them. This is the biggest town I've ever lived in, so I don't have a desire to really upgrade in terms of population. Uh, uh, you know, I, I'm 27 years into this now, so I'm closer to the good end of retirement than the far end. And I have a lot of people ask me when I say that, you know, what are you going to do? Where are you, where are you going to live? I said, well, it's never occurred to live me for me to live anywhere else, and I I, I don't intend to. Um, uh, this is the place I've lived the longest at this point, and minus some spectacular thing that happens uh, that's out of my control, is where I'll be buried. Um, I hope I've got a lot of more a lot more good years to give uh, to this community, and whether it's in working. At Western or in some other capacity, uh, I hope I still got a little gas left in the tank to to do that, and I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. <laughs>